Coach, could you review your season a little bit? Um, you had some, some very big wins and some very big highs this year. Well, we did. Uh, we've been very consistent, and that's what I've liked about this team. The team's been so consistent from day one, uh, really all the way back to Australia. Uh, we lost a game in Australia, and that was probably the best thing that happened to us. Uh, pro team beat us over there, and uh, the guys, I think, got very close to one another at that point, and that was in August. Uh, we got back, school started in late September, practice starts early October. Uh, now we're 95 plus practices in and uh, 33 games in. And we've had a lot of consistency to uh, go through our schedule. And um, you know, we've won at the Pac-12 champs place. We've won at the SEC champs place. And we beat the, the Big Ten champ as well at our place. So we have, we've had some very good wins, some key wins. We've lost four games on the year. Um, to three teams, and yet we've avenged all those losses. So to be at 33 games in and starting the national tournament, knowing that you've beaten everybody on your schedule, it speaks volumes of what these young men have been able to do, because that's not easy to do. Okay, questions for Coach Alford, and please uh, state your name and affiliation. Uh, ben Bolch, Los Angeles Times. Uh, Coach, uh, is your expectation that EK will be able to play, or is that still kind of up in the air? It's up in the air, I mean, it's day to day. Uh, He's got a sprained foot. We're just each day it's gotten better uh, since Tuesday, but uh, it'll probably be a game day decision. We don't play till seven, so we'll have to see how things go today and tomorrow. Coach Al, yes. Um, what do you know about Kent State? You know, playing these type of teams on these lower seeds because you've been you know had a lot of experience, you know, in your college career and your coaching career. Right. You know, I probably know a lot more about the Mid-American Conference than most of our guys. Um, as I grew up 20 minutes from Ball State uh, in Newcastle, so um, I followed the Mid-American Conference for a long, long time. I have a lot of friends that played in that league. In fact, Eddie Schilling, who's on my staff, played at Miami, Ohio with Ron Harper, had a great career there. So I know about the conference very well. And, you know, winning 9 out of 10 at this level is not easy, and they've been able to do that. And they've won it, you know, continuing to fight, sometimes ahead, sometimes behind, but uh, it's going to give us a look that we haven't really seen in a while. Pac-12 usually is uh, big, big, uh, and there are a lot of four-guard lineups out there against Kent State, so we got to kind of go back to the way we were playing uh, in November and December as far as uh, the style that was being played against us. Uh, but Hall's a terrific big inside. That's a handful. He leads them in just about every statistical category. That's not easy. I think Walker and Edwin are special guards, um, and they surround them with guys that really understand how to play. So uh, it's a team that's hot. It's a team that's playing very, very well, um, and, and they're going to play a little bit differently than what we've been accustomed to just because of playing a lot of four-guard lineups. We don't see a lot of that in conference play. Uh, Steve, Joe Davidson, Sacramento Bay. How fun has it been for you to coach Alonzo Ball and also to coach your son over these years? You just said that he had a, he's had a great time with you. Yeah, it's been a blast. You know, I, I've said it, you know, I've said it since coming to Westwood. It's a blessing. It's an honor. Um, you know, it's such a, it's such a privilege um, to be there and to be able to coach there and, and let alone to be able to now go through four years with Bryce, first with my oldest son, Corey, two years at New Mexico in my last two years there and the success we had and then the first two years we went to Sweet 16, won a Pac-12 championship uh, while he was there so that was fun. Now he's a video coordinator on our staff so he's a part of it uh, and now Bryce with what he's been able to do probably is as critiqued and as evaluated as uh, any player that's played at UCLA in a long long time and he, he knew right from the beginning um, that's what being a coach's kid's all about. I was a coach's kid. Uh, but I was a coach's kid at high school level, not uh, at the collegiate level at UCLA and Los Angeles and um, the tradition-rich place like UCLA is. So uh, I'm very proud of him from a coaching standpoint of seeing how he's evolved and gotten better as a player each and every year. Very proud of him as a father of how he's handled everything. He's, he's been unwavering. Uh, he stays true to his beliefs. He's been a tremendous teammate great leader, somebody that guys want to play with and want to be around. And um, those are things from a father's standpoint of who he's grown as a person uh, that we've had a lot of fun with. Sharing that as a family obviously is a lot of fun. And then Lonzo, uh, Lonzo's just, you know, not only is he fun to coach, I was a player first, uh, he's fun to be on the same team with. You know, I, Tracy Murray does our radio, who 
was a great shooter at UCLA. And I told him on a broadcast about two games ago, said, Tracy, if you and I were on this team, even at our age, we, we'd have a lot of fun shooting the ball with the way this ball moves and the shots that you get. And Lonzo has a lot to do with that. Lonzo is somebody that he can beat you by getting 15 rebounds, 15 assists, 25 points, guard your best player on the other team. Uh, he's so disruptive to uh, the other team because of his talent and his skill set. But as good as he is from a skill set, he's a better person, and he has a really good understanding of how to orchestrate a game. And that's, that's, those are hard traits. You know, there are a lot of guys out there skilled, but to orchestrate a game, where's the ball got to go, who's got to get a touch, who's hot, um, what kind of stop we got to get now, who we got to guard right. He's just got a, a great, great feel with that. So those two guys have been fun to coach, but this team's been fun to coach. It's been a, a joy to be around this group of guys because they're high character guys. Josh Peter with USA Today. Lonzo said that he was not at all surprised to hear that his father said that he could have killed Michael Jordan one on one. What do you think, and how would you respond to people who speculate this guy might be a just you know sort of a distraction or a disruptive force of the program? Yeah, it's been no distraction at all to us, uh, and a lot of that has to do with Lonzo, just to who he is, and uh, strong-willed kid. He's way beyond uh, his 18 years of, of age. He, he's a special talent, both mentally and physically, and. Uh, it's how he's wired. Uh, he's been built this way. He's been built for this. That's why I'm excited. I can't wait till 7 o'clock tonight, tomorrow night, when we can tip this thing and uh, get this tournament underway because uh, this is what he's been built for. This is what he's been wild, wired for. And I think the 23, 33 games we've been through, plus the practices, uh, this team has kind of been building towards this. Doesn't mean it's going to be ultra successful, but I do like coming into the tournament the way we are with the group of guys that we're going into it with. Um, these are the guys I want to go into battle with. And uh, obviously, Lonzo is a huge piece of that. Mark Wicker, LA Daily News. Uh, Steve, according to the stats, the new stats that, that you see all the time now, uh, teams with high tempo don't fare as well in this tournament as a team to try to slow it down. But you've been able to run pretty much when you've wanted to most of the year. How do you do that against a team that doesn't want to run with you? Well, we got to be true to who we are. Um, I thought in the Pac-12 tournament, it was the first time that that wasn't, not only was it not our tempo, but uh, our offense was not near as good. Our efficiency all year long, we've been pretty much the number one offense efficiency all year long. And we've had staggering numbers like 122 and the benchmarks like 110. If you can have an efficiency of about 110, that's a really good offense. We've been at 122 for most of the year. And those two games in the Pac-12 tournament, we were at 100. So that was a drastic drop. Um, now what you've seen defensively, um, I think the two losses in a row, I think losing to Arizona at home and at SC um, got our guys' attention. Our defensive efficiency was around 105, 106. And those 11 games since then, we've won 10 out of 11, and our defensive efficiency has been at 96, benchmark being 95. So we're getting a lot closer to what we're wanting to do defensively. So I don't think it's so much about changing anything or doing something, to whether it's Kent State or, who, or whoever it may be. We've talked about this week, just be who we are. Be true to what we do. The ball's got to move. I thought the ball stuck a little bit in, in Vegas. I didn't like our ball movement. I didn't like our screening and our spacing. We've been so good at that all year. And so that's what we've really gotten back to in the last five days. And then just continue to refine, kind of reboot what we're doing defensively. But I don't think you're going to see us doing something different to change tempo because we have been able to win games with a slower tempo and keep the efficiency up. So if it is a slower tempo, that's not as, as, a, that's not as drastic to me as does it change who we are. we got to stay who we are offensively and defensively. Really, only have gone AD most of the season. If EK is unable to play, how will that change your rotation? Then? Well, as you know, we, we've played seven a lot. I mean, we've had uh, because we've gone really outside the last couple weeks, three weeks. We've had either GG out, Tom out for a while, TJ missed uh, two games for us, uh, and EK has been in and out most of the season. So there, we've had plenty of opportunities, maybe 12 plus games, where we had a seven-man rotation. So. We've got experience doing that. We hope that's not the case, but at least we do have something that we can go back on. Look, we've played, you know, we got the opportunity to go four guards because those four guards are special. So if we have to play some more four guards, 
Uh, we've been able to do that when we've had a seven-man rotation. So we got to wait and see how EK does over the next 24 hours. But if by chance he's not playing, we've had success playing seven guys. Coach Mark Billingsley, Manhattan Mercury. A two-part question. When and how did you hear about Crean and Indiana's firing today? Two, is that a goal of yours professionally to get back to your alma mater? And if so, would you take a phone call at the end of the season? Yeah, you know, I don't know how I found out. It's just news. Um, but it, it's March Madness. And unfortunately, in our business, there's, you're, either, you're either on top or something like this is happening to all of us. Um, I've been in a long time, 26 years now. So I've seen things evolve. I've seen how things go that way. And, um, but that's never been something that I look at, whether it be that job or other jobs. It's, um, I learned a long time ago when I was probably four or five years into the job, I started interviewing for some jobs that that's, all, that's what I wanted. Uh, when I quickly trusted God and trusted you know, my faith, uh, my journey has taken me to places I had no idea that that was going to be my journey. And I've fallen in love with every spot. I've met great people, great institutions. And uh, obviously, um, that was 30 years ago. I was a part of that. I stood on stage with a great group of guys and won a national championship. It's my home state. I played there. Um, so obviously, all that comes up. But um, I love UCLA. I love Los Angeles. Um, it, you're talking about arguably the greatest brand uh, anywhere on the planet. And um, we got things going at a very high level now, and we're very excited about it. And we're excited about being in this tournament and seeing what we can do in this tournament. Would you take a phone call? That's really going to be my comment you know, <laughs> about that situation because I don't want that to uh, be what this is about. This is about us. This is about what these group of guys are doing, and that's really where my focus is. Steve Warren Williamson, Oregon Duck News. A lot of this tournament, the spotlight's been on Villanova, Kansas, Duke, Carolina, some of those programs. What are your thoughts about your program, Arizona and Oregon, and how they stack up, how the Pac-12 will stack up, and how much damage can they do in this tournament this year? Yeah, and Dana and Sean, have I, we've all talked a little bit about that. Um, you know, and I think it, it is important because um, you hear a lot, you know, about well, the pac 12s it's been this long since we've been in the Final Four and those type of things. I, all I will say is it's hard, uh, regardless of what those teams that you just talked about. Uh, it's hard. It's you start with 351 teams, it gets reduced to 68. Then you got to win six games on neutral, all six on neutral courts. Um, it is a hard championship to win, and I think we all understand that. Uh, but I think. Sean likes his team, Dana likes his team, I, I like my team. Um, we've got chances, we've got opportunities. I, I think when you look at you know, that AP top 10, um, I, I told the team that, that um, the final poll came out, I think we were eighth, um, Oregon and Arizona, right? Arizona a little bit higher, or Oregon might have been seventh or ninth, but three of us in the top 10, and yet all the pundits, if you listen to that night, somebody was picking that team to win it in that top 10. So, you know, we've had a great body of work to get to this point, uh, but now you gotta go play the games and you gotta play good basketball. Whether you're Oregon, Arizona, ourselves, or any of those schools that you mentioned, you're not gonna advance in this tournament not playing good basketball. So you've gotta play uh, your game. That's why I answered the question a minute ago. You just gotta be yourself. Uh, you can't, this isn't the time to, we're 33 games in this. All of us have had a lot of success in our league. Um, but we've got to play, all of us have to play good basketball. And we're all pulling for one another. Um, obviously, that would be something very special to meet in Phoenix because uh, you finally got a Final Four out west. And we've been wanting that for a long time. So uh, wishing Arizona the best, wishing Oregon the best. SC advanced last night. So, um, and obviously, I want the best for us as we tip tomorrow night as well. Steve, uh, Brian Bennett with ESPN. Uh, you, uh, the defense has been a kind of a focus for you guys, sort of pundits and that sort of thing. Bryce earlier sounded very confident. He said that you guys could get stops when you need it. You mentioned kind of refining the defense here last week or so. Where did you feel like your defense was in the back 12 tournament and what, what things do you still need to prove going forward? Well, I thought we had some slippage. I thought we had slippage both offensively and defensively in the Pac-12 tournament. And um, we're totally healthy, not an excuse, but we just seemed out of sync. Um, We've been able to reboot things here in the last four or five days. I have loved the guys' the excitement. I think this is the tournament um, that they've really been gearing and looking for. We just won nine, ten of games in a row. Um, 
against Pac-12 opponents, um, which that's hard to do. So we went through all of February undefeated, first two weeks in March undefeated. So um, you know, that was a grind to be able to do that. You're playing teams multiple times. We just played at Arizona about a week earlier. We played SC at home two and a half weeks before that. Um, so I think getting to new opponents in a different landscape will help our guys' mindset. But I like where we're at defensively. You know, we've been critiqued at that end probably as hard as anybody. You know, they've kind of forgotten about how efficient our offense is. You know, there are other teams around the country that are, you know, incredible defensive teams, but I don't know about how they are offensively. Uh, but their offense doesn't get critiqued. That's that's Los Angeles. It's UCLA. It's it's where the bar is um, at UCLA. But uh, I love where we're at right now, uh, and hopefully we'll play to that tomorrow night. Steve, uh, Tim Bonds from the Washington Post. I appreciate you not wanting to talk about Indiana, but just to circle back to it a little bit. Um, were you concerned at all that, that any talk about that job, given you mentioned your myriad connections to it in the state, might be a distraction for your team as you try to go through the tournament? No. 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 Not even, not even in a market like, like Los Angeles? Well, no. I'm not, I can't control what gets talked about, but no. <laughs> it's, we're, we're very focused on what we got to do. One last question, Ben. I know Bryce wants to continue his career after this in the NBA, but uh, do you see him as, as a head coach someday? I don't know. He's never talked about that. Corey, uh, the, the oldest, has always wanted to get into coaching, but I, I don't know, he's never said anything about um, coaching the game. So I don't know if that's where his, uh, his line of work is going to be done when he's done playing or not. But uh, hopefully he has a, a long career ahead of him because I think he's talented enough. Um, but I don't know if it'll be coaching. That, that, we'll have to wait and see. I know Corey, that's the path he wants, but uh, Bryce may want a, a different path. Coach, thank you very much.